Welcome to the Battle of Daytonas. I am Karar, and this is my choice. I am Alex, and this is my choice. Rolex started producing chronographs back in 1955. But the history of the Daytona actually starts in 1963 with the reference 6239. It was the first chronograph with the tachymeter on the bezel instead of the dial. It also had the iconic Panda dial that today translates into millions of dollars for a well-conditioned watch. This was the first reference that Rolex nicknamed Daytona, although it was just a nickname and not officially on the dial of the watch. The name comes from the famous race course in Florida named Daytona International Speedway where Rolex first served as the official timekeeper in 1962, hence the name Tribute and why we today call Rolex Chronographs for Daytona. A year later, in 1964, Rolex chained up the dial and added the now famous Daytona signature to it. Its position was just below the word Cosmograph and not where we see it today. Fast forward three more years and we're in 1967, Rolex releases a new dial with the Daytona signature curved on top of the 6 o'clock subdial, the position we'll all get to enjoy for decades ahead. The Daytona's popularity today makes you wonder how popular was this model back in the 60s and the 70s. Many might think it was an instant hit. But on the contrary, the Rolex Daytona struggled to sell. It was actually a shelf warmer. It wasn't until Paul Newman and other celebrities wearing the Rolex Daytona for it to start improving its sales numbers. It took another 21 years before we saw any major upgrade to the Rolex Daytona line. In 1988, Rolex released the Daytona Zenith Caliber 4030. And that was the first automatic Rolex Daytona that Rolex released. So now, Let's have a closer look of the modern Daytona with Alex. In 2000, Rolex introduced the new caliber 4130. It was the first in-house chronograph caliber made by Rolex. This is the caliber we see in the current 116500. One of the biggest differences between the Zenith Daytonas and the new generation is that they went from a case with brushed lugs to a highly polished one. Movement-wise, the new caliber 4130 had about 20% fewer parts than the Zenith caliber, which made it much easier to service. It also had an increased power reserve of 72 hours instead of 50. In 2011, the first ceramic bezel was introduced on the rose gold Daytona with the reference 116515. This was the first Daytona to feature a ceramic bezel. The ceramic bezel was also used in the 2013 Platinum Daytona that was the 50th anniversary model of the series. The ceramic bezel adds an extra dimension to the watch and the beauty of the black ceramic is quite stunning. Compared to the steel bezels, the ceramic is scratch proof and will probably look as good as new in 50 years. It took Rolex another three years until the ceramic bezel was introduced for the stainless steel models. So in 2016, the watch we have in our hands today was introduced. So let's have a closer look of this extremely popular watch. The Rolex Daytona comes in a 40 millimeter sized case with a lug to lug distance of 46.5 millimeters and a thickness of just 12.2 millimeters. It's covered by a sapphire crystal and is run by the in-house caliber 4130 chronograph movement. The new model also have a ceramic bezel with a tachymeter scale. The white dial is often called the Panda due to the white and black subdials that resemble the eyes on an actual Panda. Some say this is not a Panda dial because the subdials are not completely black. The second hand on the Daytona is located inside a 6 o'clock subdial. It also has screw down pushers to secure its 100 meter water resistance. The Daytona comes on an oyster bracelet with highly polished center links. All right guys, so now we've had a closer look of both watches. And now we're gonna talk a little bit more about why I picked the 
white Daytona and why Alex picked the black Daytona. So Alex, wanna share with us why you picked the black? Sure, um, for me it was quite simple. Uh-huh. And uh... You know what? Let me take a guess why you picked the black Daytona. Okay. I think Alex picked the black Daytona because you like classic clothes. Mm -hmm. You have sure. a classic style. And sure. you like to play it safe. You don't like to risk it. Mm -hmm. And I think you're a little bit boring on that aspect. <laughs> <laughs> Am okay. I right? Yeah, you're qu actually, you're not wrong. So, <laughs> so yeah. Uh, you're you're onto something here and okay. uh, yeah the reason why i choose the black one is because i like the more stealthy look of of the watch uh, it's not uh, as much in your face as the white dial uh, version and uh, you can easily you know wear it with a suit this one i mean not not, not that one what do you mean <laughs> i mean you can definitely rock this one on a suit as well uh, yeah of course you can. I mean, that's up to you and your personal taste. But I, I think this one is a bit more subtle and uh, uh, it, it's uh, better for me because as Kara said, I like to, to play it safe and uh, <laughs> wear boring clothes and, you know, stuff like that. Uh, but I like uh, the black black dial and the black uh, bezel. It's uh, for me, it's really nice. good looking. Nice. So, okay. Mr. Mr. Colorful Personality. What do you mean? I mean, <laughs> it's it's quite. Let me take a guess why you choose the the white Alex. Okay. Because you're obviously you're gonna a, give your opinion. A man of color, as you all can see here. We have okay. The Let's have sporty a... Lacoste sponsored guy here next to me. Let's and, have a uh, listen. Yeah, you choose it because it's the most colorful option of these two. Okay. And also because. Obviously, it's the, it's the more expensive one, and you have quite expensive taste, and you're a bit more sensitive to the overall uh, uh, hype and uh, factors like that. Oh, you're calling me hype man now. Yeah, oh, you're, you're oh, a real oh, hype beast, man. Oh, real oh, hype beast. Okay. <laughs> All right. No, I mean, Am I wrong? No, you, you might not be wrong. I don't know. My, I mean, I just go with my with, with my taste, and the the white dial speaks to me way better than the black dial. And I like the black dial on the non-ceramic ones. Mm -hmm. I have a black one uh, myself yeah. with with the two-tone. But uh, when you have the ceramic uh, bezel that is already black, I think it's a little bit too much to mm -hmm. have black on black. But that's my style. So uh, I know there's a ton of people out there that really loves the black on black. Yeah. So guys, uh, now when you've heard why we chose what we chose would love to hear your comments and which watch you would have chosen i actually have a really special relationship with the rolex daytona model i remember this was the first watch that actually caught my attention and uh, this was also the first luxury model that i ever owned and I remember back in 2014 when I, for the first time, saw it on somebody's wrist. And the only thing I knew then was that it was a Rolex and it was a chronograph. So I basically went into an authorized dealer and explained that I had seen a chronograph from Rolex and I'm interested to see all of the available models to see if I can spot the one that I saw on this guy's wrist. <laughs> And the guy tells me there's only one chronograph from Rolex and just there he caught my attention. I was like, all right, okay. And then he told me the name was Daytona. And I remember this was when I used to live in, in Malta and he takes out a white dial steel Daytona and explains to me that this model is becoming very hard to get. Uh, but they have it available. So this is six years ago. This is six years ago. Yeah. yeah, six years ago, I was able to walk into an authorized dealer, and they had it in store, the stainless steel. Yes, they had one yeah. white dial stainless steel in store. So I didn't really like the stainless steel. Uh, I waited a couple of months, and I bought the two tone with the black dial because mm -hmm. that really spoke to me mm -hmm. more. I want some gold, some flair, yeah. <laughs> and that. From that moment on, my love and appreciation for watches was just a big hole that couldn't be filled. And five, six years later, 
I work within the industry and my work surrounds watches. So I've completely changed my career thanks to that purchase, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's quite fascinating, actually. Yeah, it yeah. is. That's why I love it so much. Yeah, I can understand that. Yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> About, you know, anecdotes like this. I actually also fell in love with the Rolex Daytona in like 2015. Uh huh. Uh, and I bought uh, a Zenit Daytona with the white dial. Ooh. A series, so the last series in production. Uh, bought it for like uh, 8,000 euros back then. Ouch. Mm -hmm. Sold it a couple of months later, you know. They should be trading around 30, 40 right now, yeah, right? I, I, I don't even check because <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I bought it and sold it for, for 8k euro and uh, yeah, that, that's... <laughs> that's a story of your Daytona journey. My Daytona journey was a bit shorter than yours. I, I actually bought one of these two years ago and uh, I bought it at a premium and I never thought that I would buy a watch, you know, over retail. But yeah, uh, yeah I caved in uh, to the hype and mm -hmm. uh, bought it at like 15,000 euros or something like that. Okay. Uh, I was terrified that the prices would drop, you know, instantly after that. When was that? Two years ago. Two years ago? Yeah. So I sold it pretty quickly after I had it for like two, three weeks or something like that. Because, <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, <laughs> I like you, to play it safe. You, you were scared. <laughs> I was scared. So, uh, yeah, the, the, the rest is history, basically. But because, did you make profit on it when you sold it? No, nah, it was like uh, plus minus. Okay. Uh, yeah, but... You know, the prices today are something completely different than yeah. two years ago. Yeah, exactly. And that's the segment that we're going to move into right now. We're going to talk a little bit about its retail prices mm. and also what they actually trade for in the market. Mm. So the retail price for both watches are at the same level, which is in US dollars, 13,100. It's slightly higher in Europe due to the VAT that's already included in the prices. Mm -hmm. But that is re that is retail, yeah. meaning you have to buy it an, at an authorized dealer. Mm. The chances of you walking in and getting a Rolex Daytona steal at an authorized dealer, really? That's really I'm, huge. No, maybe even like that. That's pretty much. Uh, I'd say they're slim to none. Mm. You'd much rather spot a unicorn before you, you'll be able to get something like that. Yeah. Uh, and also, there's no waiting list and stuff like that in pretty much all over the place. You need to know somebody really well to be able to get it through an AD. Mm. Uh, so they have been trading for uh, a premium in mm -hmm. the secondary market. Mm. The We just checked it up. The black version uh, of the Daytona trades today around 23,000 US dollars. Yeah, so that's... that's 10K, 10, yeah. Yeah, that's 10,000 above retail price. Mm. And you have the white version Rolex Daytona that trades for 25,000 US dollars for a new one. And that is 12,000 above retail. That is almost double the retail price, which is absolutely crazy. But that's the re reality yeah, we're living in right yeah, now. Yeah. Nuts, man. Yeah, I mean, oh, we like the Daytona, both of us. It's a it's a gorgeous watch, but yeah, for those prices, I don't 25, know, twenty five twenty five thousand dollars. Yeah, that's a little bit too steep for a steel yeah. chronograph. Yeah, I would really, really love to have a steel Daytona in my own collection. Unfortunately, I can't justify twenty five k for a white dial. I, I, a hard time to justify 15k or 16k for a for a black dial back two years ago so yeah I, yeah i have a hard time justifying 23,000 as well so mm. yeah that's pretty crazy yeah so right now my hopes are up to my ad and i'm hoping to get a call soon for the white daytona if my ad is watching <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah so that's the price situation of the rolex uh, daytona unfortunately and so the conclusion here basically is that you can wear whatever you want um, we're having a little bit of fun joking and poking at the at each other mm. for for the choices we make and uh, on a poor day i would also pick the black tile i mean but yeah i wouldn't cry with the white tile on my on my wrist either so <laughs> 
So in conclusion, we believe both watches are extremely, extremely well built. It's a beautiful example of uh, the continuous history of the Rolex Daytona and what a masterpiece it is. Mm. So we hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for tuning in. And please don't forget, subscribe to the channel and leave a thumbs up.